everyone so i was trying to download eclipse id for my linux distro but then i got stuck at the file extension dot 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 gz hmm what in the world this type of file denote and how to handle this type of file so in today's video i'm gonna answer each and everything you need to know about tar command tar file dot 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 gz file everything will be with crystal clear with the concept so let's start today's video so I think uh, we before we actually dive into the concept, um, I think uh, let me put an analogy before you. I think we all in our childhood have uh, seen the handkerchief magic where the magician uh, has one hanky and uh, when the audience pulls the hanky, it actually multiplies into a lot and lot of hankies. Just so now why I just shown you this? because the tar command exactly does the same thing here we can think that the tar file is a uh, first thing tar and tar.gz files are not the same we will be getting this in a moment okay so you can think that the hanky this hanky is a tar file and these things are actually put inside the tar file magically how before that you need to uh, check whether you are clear with this concept or not that is the archive so archive is a single file so are you i think you need to actually check on this concept that what do you think about an archive whether you consider it as a folder or a file first thing archive is not a folder archive is a file which magically is combined of a lot of files and in linux the tar command does the archiving job which in simple language basically we give the tar command lots of files and directories and it converts them into a single file which we call an archive okay fine so and uh, before we uh, go into tar.gz let us actually um, create a tar file by ourselves so that we actually get it better and we'll also learn about all these flags and we'll use all these flags also don't worry so i'm on my desktop i have opened my terminal i'm on my desktop so here i have few folders so let me for uh, create a tar file first or an archive first when i say a tar file uh, it actually means an archive it's same so let me uh, for create a tar file comprising the mark sheets you can see that the mark sheets directory has this much files and my sorry my notes directory has this much files so let me uh, use these two directories to be plugged into one archive file using the tar command okay let me clear this a bit okay so to create a tar file or an archive we need to use some flags the most important flag in this case is the c flag c for create so it will create an archive file so let me write this next we need to use this f flag because we need to actually give a file name to our archive file right and another flag is there which is the v flag it's optional uh, what it does v for verbos uh, what it does it basically shows you the extra information or the progress details we'll be checking it a bit and let me give the name to the new tar file that will be created in a few moments and which files or directories are getting clubbed in this archive i need to mention those names here i'm passing two directories the mark sheets directory and the my notes directory to create the archive file and the archive file will be named m.tar okay let's check so you can see that the details is getting shown here due to the v or the verbose flag so v flag does this that you can see that the mark sheets directory and all these files are inside the mark sheets directory and the, the my notes directory and those files are inside my notes directory and all these files and directories are actually clubbed into our single you can see that 
this archive file. So our archive file or the tar file is created. Now let us check another concept here. What do you think? Because I've seen a lot of people getting this misconception. Is what do you think? The tar command does compression or lessen the size, total size. Um, if you think so, then technically it doesn't. How to check this? So you can see that I have actually uh, clubbed the mark sheets and the my notes, these two directories into this single tar file. So first let me check the total size of these two directories. To check the size of a directory, uh, there is the new command in Linux and also I need to uh, check it in human readable format and I need to uh, so to get the um, size in human readable format you need to provide sh flag and to get the total size you need to provide the c flag along with it okay fine so I want the size of my notes and mark sheets So you can see that the total size of these two directories are 16 MB. Okay. Now let me check the size of my tar file, new tar file. You can see that the size are exactly same. So technically tar command doesn't lessen uh, or compresses the files and directories we make uh, the archive of. So now comes the second uh, extensions uh, part. Why this dot gz? So gz is for compression. Now since we have seen that the tar command doesn't compress by default. So to perform further compression, we need to rely upon some external uh, compressing utility programs like gunzip or exzip available in unix so gz is for gunzip and i'm gonna use the same so if i want to sorry oops yeah so now i'll be compressing this m.tar file and m.tar.gz file will be produced and the size will be definitely lessened because we have applied compression over this archive file okay so let's do that so now a new file will be created so certainly along with tar command we'll have to use this c flag and since we'll be applying compression so we'll have to use this z flag because z flag performs both compression and decompression okay so cz and if i really want to see the progress we can use this v or else I don't want to see the progress so I'm um, using the if command uh, if uh, flag because I need to give a file name <laughs> to the new uh, compressed archive file and I'll be um, giving the name m.r.gz okay from the m.r file okay so this is the source file and this will be the destination file okay and you can see that so here as I haven't used the V flag so the progress is not shown unlike before and if I have used V flag here then the progress would have uh, been certainly shown now I can uh, use the elect, uh, list uh, command to list and you can see that the new uh, compressed archive file has been produced and now if I check the size of this file certainly it will be lesser than 16 MB can see that okay so now uh, we need to extract the compressed file just like here I need to after downloading this file I need to perform the extraction also here so now we need to uh, know how to uh, perform extraction on a compressed archive file and then how to untar the archive file to get back our original resources, files and directories that has been archived into a single file, right? Okay. So you can see that now these are the files on my desktop and the directories. So let me remove some uh, directories 
so otherwise the effect won't be visible here first let me remove the tar file because uh, during extraction this will be reproduced and let me remove this my notes and the mark sheets directory uh, because this also will be uh, reproduced uh, once we extract our compressed archive file so to remove i'm using the remove command and also i'm passing the r flag because the directories have some items and when you really want to delete some directories having non empty directories you need to use this recursively delete flag or r flag r and my notes okay so yeah delete it so fine um, now let us uh, extract the files and directories from our compressed archive file so to do that we need to use this z flag for decompression and also this x flag to extract items from our target okay. so now let's do that no new file will be created so no need to use the c flag so i'm giving the sorry x z v uh, if you really want to see the progress and if i'm giving the file name m dot tar dot gz okay so you can see that the tar file tar file has been reproduced yes and now if i enter the file using this command x v f and m dot tar the mark sheets and my notes two directories will be shown here yeah you can see that my notes and mark sheets so this is how we handle a tar file and also a tar.gz file now you can also see the contents inside the tar file using t flag the t flag is t vf m dot tar yeah you can see that this is the long list along with the permission the folder the size the date created and all and the file names anyhow so these are all the items inside the tar file so that's it i hope so why to create the tar files um, because it's definitely portable instead of carrying a lot of files and directories you can actually carry a single single file containing all the directories and files it's a single file containing directories so it's definitely very portable and so this is so on the use of tar command uh, first the files and directories uh, produce the tar file and then we apply some external uh, compression utility program make it tar.gz or compressed archive file we have seen all this so thank you so i hope you have understood so stay tuned